Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brendan Bynes from Chichichecky.com and welcome to yet another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to start mixing things up a little bit and get ourselves into some Photoshop CS6 beta. Because, you know, a new Photoshop comes out, you gotta make a tutorial on it. Except today it's not necessarily a tutorial, it's more of a demonstration of a new feature that comes with Photoshop. Alright, so let's start off by opening up a picture that we want to edit. So let's go ahead and bring in this little picture here that I took a few days ago for a photo project of mine. And so the filter that we're going to be going over today is this, uh, what was it called? It's called oil paint. And normally you probably wouldn't think that you'd want to use oil paint, but after, you know, messing with it a little bit, it's actually a pretty cool filter. So let's go ahead and add this little oil paint filter and see what we got going here. So I've already messed with this a little bit, so I have an idea of how it works and all that, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you a quick demonstration of all these sliders and how they apply. So I'm just going to go over here to this uh, this little, I don't even know what it's called, it's just a group of branches, I don't know if there's a specific name for that, but anyway, let's go ahead and get over to these little brush styles and all that. Now the stylization is basically how the oil paint, or whatever it's called, is applied to the image. So when you put it down all the way down to 0.1, you can see that everything's kind of like jagged and dotty looking. So it's as if you, they took like a brush, put it in the oil paint, and just kind of dabbed it all over the place. Obviously this is a really high quality brush, but you know, it still looks kind of, you know, jaggedy here and there. But as you start putting up the stylization, you start seeing everything start smoothing over. So it's as if instead of just blotching it on there, you're actually getting some brush strokes in there. So obviously, depending on what kind of effect you're wanting to go for, you'll just kind of, you know, manipulate that style just as you need it. Now the cleanliness is how much those brush strokes blend together. So obviously, if you put the cleanliness all the way down to zero, it goes back to that kind of blotchy look. But if you start increasing it slowly but surely, you'll start seeing all those brush strokes blend together. And when you keep going more, you see that all the details in general start to blend together. So when you put it all the way up to 10, you see that we lose a lot of detail, but you kind of get this interesting little look going here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So you start seeing that all these branches and all that start blending into all these weird curves and all that, which is kind of cool looking in one way or another. But, you know, maybe it's not your thing, so maybe you want to, you know, put that back down to whatever setting that you want it to be. Now the scale, that's pretty obvious. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. All right, so the scale is pretty straightforward. The scale basically represents the size of the brush that would be used on this particular oil painting. So scale it down, you got a smaller brush, scale it up, you have a larger brush and you got a larger look and effect. So obviously, you know, you just scale that, uh, let's, you know, I'll just keep that down somewhere around there, just because I kind of like how it looks like it's got finer details to it. Now the bristle detail, obviously, it, okay, so maybe it's not that obvious. The bristle detail is actually a little bit harder to notice, so I'll try and zoom in and give it a little bit of time to load. Now you might not be able to see this too much, but the bristle detail kind of brings out some of those really fine lines that you would see when you start actually making actual like oil paintings and stuff, which I'm sure most people don't really do. So I don't know, you probably won't even notice a difference with the bristle detail, but you can still mess with it nonetheless just to see if you can get a different look. Now with the angular direction, you can see this best when I go down here to this whitish area. The angular direction basically represents the angle that the brush strokes are made across the entire canvas. So this goes on a scale from 0 to 360. So you can imagine that's, you know, full circle 360 degrees, where 0 is basically left and right, and you go, you know, clockwise to 180, so that would be straight up and down, and then back over to 360. So obviously that's pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about it too much. Now the shine is basically the overall contrast. So zero is basically no contrast at all between the dark strokes and the bright strokes. And then going all the way up, you get a really intense contrast between the brights and the darks. So let's just go ahead and mess with this to see if we can get a effect that we think looks kind of cool. Now I've already messed with this, so I already know that if I put this up uh, somewhere around between eight and nine, we're getting something kind of cool. Let's go ahead and put the shine back down to about 0.75 or something like that. Let's change the angular direction to about 240, 250-ish around there. 
Now let's go ahead and put the cleanliness up so we can start seeing those details blur together and get that cool look that we saw earlier. And the scale, um, I'll go ahead and keep that down around, let's actually put that around somewhere around two to make that look kind of cool. And then the bristle detail, I'll go ahead and put that all the way up just so I know there's finer details in there somewhere, but I can't really see them in this particular picture. So with all those settings, we got a pretty cool looking effect going on here. We got all kinds of craziness. So let's go ahead and hit OK and see how this looks on the overall picture. All right, so I have to admit, it's kind of hard to see when you got this zoomed out on such a huge picture. But when you zoom in, you can definitely see all those details and all that, especially on uh, our friend Adam over here, who was so kind to be a little model for me. We got a cool outline going on. You can see all these little brush strokes kind of outlining the, the like the veins or the, the muscles going on in his arm. And I don't know, I, I just think it looks really cool, especially when it comes to like plants and stuff, This the details on this branch and all that. It really comes out to looks pretty freaking cool. So overall, I think this new filter is pretty cool. I, I imagine that people will start coming up with some creative ways to implement this into their artwork later on. But right now, this was a pretty good little rundown of how the oil filter works and all that. So thank you guys for watching our little tutorial here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below, even though I think this uh, tutorial was pretty straightforward. So yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment, share with others, all that fun stuff. Get us as much publicity as possible. That way we get more traffic and more moolah. <laughs> Just kidding, but not really. So anyway, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day for today, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.